Hi and welcome to our interpretable machine learning lecture. In this part, we will have a look at inherently interpretable models. This session will focus on the motivation of inherently interpretable models and outline some advantages and disadvantages. The most straightforward approach to achieve interpretability is just to use, of course, an already interpretable model. And there are some classes of models that are, by their definition, already deemed interpretable, like a linear regression model. Now, some of these models, we will look at them in more detail in the next sessions. On the right-hand side, we have just an illustration of the linear regression model, which shows a straight line. This is an example of the bike sharing data set. We have linked on our web page the short description of this data set where the aim is to predict the number of bike rental based on some weather information and time dependent information. And here in this example, we see that there's a linear line that tries to estimate the effect or the relationship between the temperature and the number of bike rentals. And of course, if you are interested in how does the temperature affect the number of bike rentals, you can just use linear regression, which gives you this line that you see here to get an understanding of the model. So for inherently interpretable models, we usually don't really need certain model agnostic interpretation methods because they already allow us to get some insights that we are interested in. And having these insights already at hand, uh, we get them for free, so to say eliminates a source of error because these model agnostic interpretation techniques are also nothing else than estimators and having no need to apply them and extract information out of the model with these model agnostic methods, we get rid of one potential source of error, right? So here on the right hand side, for example, we see a decision tree. We will have a look at decision trees later in more detail. But basically what a decision tree tries to do is it splits the feature space into regions and then predicts in the leaf nodes, you know, like these guys here, it gives you a, a prediction of your target. If you want to, for example, trace back how a certain prediction was made, then you just have to follow the path here. For example, this path here on the right hand side, and then you can see by these rules here how this prediction was made, uh, which is already some nice information that you can get for free if you use as learning algorithm a decision tree. So another advantage of interpretable models is that they are usually computationally really fast, so we can train them pretty fast. And another nice thing is that interpretable models like linear models and generalized linear models, they kind of estimate monotonic effects. And yeah, here we can see that this line is monotonic increasing, which is the effect of the temperature with respect to the number of bike rentals here. And this is a nice property because we can summarize this marginal effect into one number, the slope of this line that will tell us how the relationship between the temperature of, from the x-axis affects our target on the y-axis. Another advantage of interpretable models is that many people from different areas already are somehow familiar with these models. And being already familiar with a certain class of models of course, increases trust because you understand what's going on. It simplifies the communication of the results because you can yeah, much easier tell to a lay person what the model kind of did. And it's rather intuitive, like this decision tree or this linear line. This is something that you can directly communicate to lay persons and they usually get some idea of uh, what, what's going on. Now we will have a look at some disadvantages, of course. And yeah, some of these inherently interpretable models have some strong assumptions, either about the data or about the model structure. And if the assumptions are wrong, then the models perform bad. Yeah, we have illustrated here 
on the right hand side a uh, you know, real underlying quadratic effect by the points here. And if you fit a linear regression model, it would look like this line here. And of course, linear regression models makes only sense if this relationship between the feature and the target is somehow expected to be linear or approximately linear. So inherently interpretable models can also be hard to interpret. So usually what gets complicated is if you have lots of features and lots of interactions that you include in, for example, a linear regression model, they make it, of course, more difficult to get an understanding how the target that we are interested in is affected by all of these features and interactions. Now, this is just a lot of information that you are getting because for each of these features and interactions, the model estimates a weight. And if you have many of these weights, you have to interpret all of them. And yeah, the quantity here makes things more complicated. And also, for example, decision trees with a huge depth, a really deep tree, like, I don't know, with a lot of splits that are made. And then, of course, at each of these connection lines here, you have one rule. And the more rules, the more complicated it gets and the harder the model is to interpret. Another disadvantage is that inherently interpretable models often do not automatically model complex relationships because they are themselves limited with respect to flexibility, like linear regression models, for example, are limited by definition to estimate only linear effects. And if you want to include higher order effects like quadratic or cubic or interactions between multiple features, you need to specify it manually. So you need to tell the linear regression model, please don't only use main effects, please also use quadratic effects for certain features and also which yeah, higher order effects and interactions it should consider. And this is, of course, inconvenient because it cannot be automated and yeah, things are getting more complicated. So inherently interpretable models do not provide all types of explanations. And there are certain types of ex explanations that a user might be interested in that are not given from, from the model or from the model structure. For example, a linear regression model or a decision tree doesn't give you this information of counterfactual explanation. So this is why these methods like counterfactual explanations that belong to this model agnostic interpretation tools are even useful also for linear regression models and decision trees. Uh, so there are some researchers that argue that interpretable models should be preferred in the first place, which I would agree. This is usually the first step you should look at and then gradually improve the model. Instead of having a complex model and then explaining it afterwards, which is inconvenient then. It can work out to kind of prefer or use in the first place interpretable models, but you sometimes have to spend a lot of time and energy by pre-processing the data or maybe also manually construct some features like manual feature engineering. For example, like interactions can be seen as a product of two original features. And by uh, making this, this feature engineering here, you allow the interpretable model to be kind of more flexible because if you, for example, take the square root or if you multiply a feature with another feature, you basically have a nonlinear effect of that feature and an interaction of that feature that you're introducing. Yeah. Like I said, it can sometimes work out in the sense that you can still get a good performance with it, but you need to spend enough time and energy on yeah, things like data processing, manual feature engineering, and so on. And the drawback or another drawback is that in this regard, it's hard to achieve for certain types of use cases, yeah, especially for cases where end-to-end -end learning is crucial which just means that you have unstructured data. Then in the end, you need to do feature extraction for images, for example. You can kind of try to extract color information. And for text, you can, for example, extract the bag of words and count how often a certain word occurred uh, and use this as feature in a linear regression model. 
However, all of these things lead to some kind of information loss because you are given the image that contains the original information. And if you want to apply an interpretable model, you need yeah, to make tabular data out of this unstructured data. And doing this is only possible with some kind of information loss. And information loss is often also related to a bad performance because you're throwing away some potential important information for your task at hand. There's usually a trade-off between interpretability and a model performance. We have illustrated this here in a graph, it's like linear regression models and decision trees. They are deemed interpretable and yeah, have lower performance compared to more complex models like neural networks or gradient boosting or random forest and so on. So let's conclude this session with some recommendations. Usually you should start with the simplest model, which can be a linear regression model, a decision tree, a model that is uh, interpretable and simple enough and makes sense for your application at hand. You should always check the performance, of course, and see if this performance is sufficient for your use case. If not, you can gradually increase the complexity either by keeping this interpretable model and do this feature engineering or by trying out some complex machine learning models and compare their performance. Yeah, like we have done this here in an example on the bike sharing data and checked within a fourfold cross-validation two measures, the, the root mean squared error and the R squared measure that we are looking. Apparently the linear model was better than a decision tree. Yeah. For these two class of models, then in this use case, we would prefer a linear regression model over a decision tree. If you kind of apply a random forest, which can already achieve a good performance without having to tune its hyperparameters or for example, boosting, which we will learn later on in more detail is one powerful ensemble of decision trees and has lots of hyperparameters we have tuned. If you now compare these two kind of models here in our use case, we get a boost in our performance. Yeah, that's true. But then we kind of, for our application at hand, have to think about, okay, is it worth to tune it? I mean, this is always an effort that you need to do. If you look at the random forest in its default values, the performance was not too bad yeah, compared to the boosting model. Maybe we can go for the random forest in this case. So in the end, we have to take into account this trade-off between interpretability and performance and decide whether we want to go for a more complex model if the performance, for example, is better than without looking at this complex model. The so-called Occam's razor tells you that you should choose the most simple, sufficient model in the end. And with these words, I conclude this session.